Hey guys, today we're going to do an assembly video of a standard leg that will be eventually converted to an upgraded leg. You'll see I have my tools ready there, but we're going to unbox this and I'll go over the parts with you guys. Okay, so we're looking at the three main parts that come out of the box from a standard leg. You got your bracket, tiller arm with throttle and kill switch, and of course the main drive system with the three blade prop. Now today we're going to assemble it as an upgrade. This is the upgraded version, which you'll see in a minute with a different prop and a different throttle system. And of course, everything will be adjusted. Um, there will be a trim and tilt added to that. So I'm going to address this as a standard leg and eventually do the upgrade in the same video. Okay. You'll see stainless fittings, which we'll talk about those, the bracket bolts and all that as we build out. So the first thing we're going to do today is I'm swapping out the throttle system and the kill switch. And then I'm going to mount the leg up on my back little system here, which I usually do when I build them upright. And uh, we'll go from there. So you'll see when these come out of the box, I don't adjust these. So I am going to pull off the, uh, the clutch housing, the tiller arm clamp, and I'm going to slide down the mechanism for the bracket. You'll see that kind of right there in black. Um, of course, down here you have two collars and a locking mechanism, which I'll explain a little bit later. But all this is going to come off temporarily. I'm going to fill the gear case with oil by pulling the drive shaft out. The three blades coming off, two blades going on with a lock collar. And then as this gets assembled, we'll try to do step by step. Okay, so now that the tiller arm clamp is off, you're going to see kind of the bracket that moves vertically on the mount. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the bracket to the clamp. And it's basically a through bolt that goes right in there. You can't really screw that up. I leave the bracket somewhat loose so as I put it on there it'll slip right in so once I have that on I'll show you how the lock works down here and I will lock it up and kind of switch over to my little T in the back that I made to build these motors all right so there we go all right this is by far the easiest way to assemble these you'll see I just kind of made a little rudimentary stand here um, we're going to slide this bracket on and put the pin right through it that at least give us the ability to keep this upright as we kind of assemble it and uh, we'll go from there the main bracket bolt is on. You can kind of see it there. Washers do go on the outside. Um, take note of the trim angles here. I usually bring mine back to the last setting, which is right here, because you want the, the engine to run somewhat you know, neutral to negative. Um, there is a lock collar right there, which I spin around in a moment. You'll see me spin this around. I do grease this, which I'll go over the grease points later on. Um, I try to make sure everything's somewhat in line when I build this. So all my bolts are in line, all my brackets are in line. Not that you have to, but it's just kind of wise to do that. So I, I moved up the, the tube a little bit. I just loosened up here, here, and here. I did spin this around so it remains locked. Moved it up a couple of inches. This is going on a new canoe, so it needs to be a little bit higher out of the water. Um, the clamp will be going back up here in a moment for the tiller. But just take note on this as well. You'll see now that it is spun around and the locking mechanism right here actually will hit the back end of the lower bracket. So that's gonna prevent this from even trying to move up. So if you do strike something, again, it, the you know, the foot, these are pretty robust. So if you do happen to hit it, you can always repaint it. It's not gonna harm anything. I've never had one crack, but um, I do leave a little gap in here. You'll see it, this, I, just because I don't want it to touch the bracket and I do grease this here as it rolls around. Not that it matters, but I think it helps because obviously you have a pivot point here as well as here. So I guess use your discretion on that. A little note on the uh, adjustment on the, the bracket here. You notice I kind of unscrewed both sides of this. Um, and what I commonly do is I grease the threads going in. Because remember aluminum will pit at some point if you don't clean the salt off of it. So I grease it with a really good corrosion block grease. It's made for marine applications. Good stuff. I've never had a problem with it. It doesn't have any kind of issue with it, you know, coming off in the water. So I do grease that, and you'll notice I'm going to push this all the way down, probably usually to my third setting here, and then I'll lock it down. And that tends to run the best, but you can change the trim, the trim angles any way you want to, but a little note there. Before we put the, the clamp on, just to let you guys know, I grease mine. I know some people don't do that, but I do. So if I have to slide it up and down, I don't tend to scratch the aluminum too bad. Just a little note, it's going to, guys, it's going to scratch a little bit. There's no way around it. I mean, if it mars a little bit, no big deal, as long as you keep it, you know, clean. I mean, I, even, I usually paint mine, believe it or not, just to have a coating on it. But um, I'm going to put the clamp on, just make sure you put it on the right direction. Remember, the prop's facing backwards, so your clamp's going to want to go there. 
A little note on the clamp here, I greased around the clamp as well as the fittings for the, uh, the bolts here. Um, you don't have to do that, but if you're going to be sliding this up and down, you may want to do that prior to putting it on. You also will see in here, this is the actual clamp for the tiller arm and there is a spring in there. You want to make sure you grease in there because that is black steel. There is no way around that. Um, the two will slide in here and here. It's very important that you get these on an angle and slide the tube in and get it right where you want because it will, again, be adjusted at some point once it's on the kayak. This always gives people trouble. When you are putting the tiller arm through the clamp, you want to make sure that that is slightly opened up. I usually hold it between my legs and I open the clamp up and slide the tiller arm right through it. And then from that point, grease your spring, put in your clamp. You know, again, make sure you get it the right way. Some people put it upside down and that's okay. It doesn't really matter. I always face mine upwards and that's pretty much it for that. On the upgraded legs, you guys will see that the Shimano shifter has been swapped out. And you'll see, of course, the throttle cable, which again is a Jaguar flex cable. Billet ends. Again, it has the tip that goes in the carburetor butterfly that's been soldered on. So I took the kill switch off this one because it's going to be a remote kill switch. So there's no point of having it on the actual tiller. Um, I am in a minute going to mount the motor and adjust everything because the trim will go on this. An electric actuator will go on this. I'm going to swap out the prop in a few minutes. And from that point, do a little final adjustments on this and finish the build. Really not a big deal. Okay, so the prop has come off. You'll notice here that there is the cotter pin as well as the drive pin in there, which we call a shear pin. Um, this has been taken off. You just have to straighten out the, uh, the cotter pin. Um, looking at the gearbox, you'll see there's two, two bolts up on top. There is a hole in there that holds the, the uh, shear pin. I usually run a little bit smaller shear pin in there because the hub on the back of the prop gives a little bit of wiggle if you happen to hit something you don't break the prop well it can still happen but it's, it's it helps um and then from that point i'll show you guys how to either change out the gear oil or add gear oil okay so if you guys kind of see the bottom here there's a three millimeter shear pin in there even though it takes a four the three fits perfectly in here and it gives a little bit of wiggle which i like um, you can run a four i give you a four with it if you have the upgraded system um, I run a three just because it has a little bit of slack if you hit, the, you know, something, whether it be a shoal or a piece of wood or some kind of debris. But you'll see here when this goes in, you want to make sure if you happen to take this off for whatever the reason, they are tight. So you, you got to make sure it goes on right the first time. Okay, you'll see I grease mine up real, real good to slide it on there. And from that point, I just use a rubber mount and I slightly tap it in and we're good to go. Collar goes on top. I'll show you that next. All right, so you kind of see here where it's on now there's a little bit of a gap on the bottom but remember these hubs had to be ground from scratch so there should be a little bit of gap i usually grease the shaft to make it a little bit easier going in again what you want to do now once it's on the collar you want to make sure right in here where it tightens down that you put a little bit of thread lock on it that's if you take it off most of the time these come already done for you but if you're adding it later on that's what you want to do i'm going to take a look at the gearbox here the threaded bolt that's on the side here that just literally unscrews. There should have been some sealant on this one, but apparently there was not, so which is always good. I always add some later on. It's important when you guys are getting your 80 weight oil or 90 weight oil, depending, it's just gear oil, that you make sure that you fill it about two thirds of the way up. Don't fill it all the way up because then you're gonna wind up you know, pushing the oil up into the, the drive case. But um, that's pretty much it. So what I'm gonna do is I actually got a smaller bottle because if you try to fill it through that hole right there, it's gonna wind up catching an air bubble and you're gonna think that it's full or empty. I've seen both happen and you wanna be able to get air past it so the tip on it's quite small. You wanna fill it up until it covers the bottom main gear. And I usually put a small Allen key in there just to double check on it. Just do not fill it up. Because like I said, there's a, there's a bearing in here and you wanna make sure that the, the gear oil doesn't go past that, which is not a big deal, but if you happen to lay it down then you may run into more of a problem with the oil coming out the front end, but that usually doesn't happen. Okay, so now there's about two thirds of oil, which is 80 to 90 weight uh, gear oil inside the uh, gearbox. So I'm going to put you some Honda Bond that goes on the thread on that little honey bolt there. That will then, of course, go into the bottom of the gearbox. And from that point, that's pretty much it. Tighten it up, clean up any excess that's on the edge of the, uh, the bolt, and that's it. That's simple. And again, that should be done probably once every 30 to 40 hours. See, okay, so you'll see as I tighten it down, you'll see a lot of the 
Again, Honda bond kind of spread out among the back of the washer. You just want to wipe that off and that's pretty much it. That'll harden up to some degree and that'll seal up any you know space between the threads. All right, so let me kind of go over the, uh, the wiring on this. It's very, very simple. When you guys get the tiller arm attached, you'll see that you have a waterproof connector and these two are commonly fastened to the, uh, the kill switch that's up here with the dead man. Um, the eyelet needs to go under commonly the first or second bolt, it doesn't really matter. But the black needs to go and be wired directly into the black, whether it's a Honda or a Lifon, you wanna go ahead and snip that in. And of course heat shrink that so you don't get any kind of water in it. This allows you to pull the power head off if in fact you need to surface the clutch or you need to, you know, pull the drive shaft and grease it, whatever the case may be. That's the best way to do it. Um, beyond that, it's again black to black, red eyelet to bottom bolt. And that's pretty much it. The rest can kind of just kind of dangle around here. It should have also kind of like a an area on here that has the, the cable already attached to the tiller. Okay, you'll see these nice rubber clamps that I get in here work well. You can slide it up and down, and that helps out too. So four bolts, you got to make sure that your pull cord is facing you, not the opposite way. Same thing with the, uh, the filler. You want it to face kind of the north side of the boat. It makes it easier to pull because sometimes you'll mount these backwards and everything's turned around. So you don't want to do that. All right, so that explains your kill switch. So let's kind of look at the throttle system here. You got a billet end that has the cable through with a soldered end. And you'll notice on Lifons, there's actually a threaded plate right here if it came with it. And basically, it's going to go in just like that. At the very, very top of the Honda and the Lifon, you're going to see what looks like kind of a conical shape going down the butterfly of the carburetor. That end right here slips through it. Now, you got to remember, you got to come in first up in here. And then it slides right in the top here, which you guys get a good drift on that. Okay, and then from that point, it's just a matter of screwing in the connector and adjusting it to where the butterfly is not opening up. Now, mind you, on your throttle system here, there are six reference points as far as speed. I will tell you, Life On and Honda, you may use four. I kind of ignore these, believe it or not, because, is, again, that is a Shimano shifter originally made for bicycles. But, again, does it matter? No. What I usually do is I mark a high and low mark on here. But these are the only ones that can be taken apart with stainless steel cabling. That's why I use them. They're fantastic. They last you will they will last years. Easy to correct if in fact you make a mistake. You can also adjust down here. Again, everything's nice and tight. Same thing down here. There's a boot on there just so you don't get any kind of corrosion in there. But this is aluminum stainless line Jaguar sheath. Very well made. All made from scratch. So these aren't store bought. So again, you can loop it. Some people decide that they want to go outside. I commonly go inside like that. I loop right underneath it just so I don't have to worry about the excess. And again, I do that also so if you happen to bring the tiller arm down for storage, it doesn't get in the way. Just gonna give you a little close-up shot of the drive system here. This is just the hardened shaft, nine spline to end. Of course, if we get inside there and see, there is a bearing inside of that that I usually throw some grease in, especially on the upgrades, clutch housing, pretty much all standard, but don't be afraid to pull it out. I grease mine probably at least once a year.